الحديث التاسع حديث نمبر 9 عن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعجبه التيمن في تلعله وترجله وطهوره وفي شأن كله عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت she said عائشة said that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعجبه it used to used to amaze the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم يعجبه meaning he used to give presidency and he used to like عليه الصلاة والسلام and he loved التيمن تيمن means what تيمن means to use your right using your right side he used to love عليه الصلاة والسلام to start with his right before his left in what في تلعله in wearing his shoes وترجله and also combing his hair and his beard وطهوره in purifying himself whether he done wudu whether he done ghusl whether he was to remove a impurity from himself he always liked to start with the right وفي شأن كله and in all of his affairs all of his affairs here right now in all of his affairs it actually means in usul al-fiqh this is called amun makhsus ab amun general urida biha al-khusus which means it's general intended from its specification it's general but specification was required was meant in it what does that mean it means it is general without the times when he didn't do it So, when the Prophet never entered the toilet, what would he use? Left. His left. So that's not part of it. When he came out of the masjid, what would he use? Left. His left. So those times are not in it. And I'm inshallah going to give you a dhabit. A good way to know when it's good to use the right and when it's not good to use the left. Now brothers, pay attention. This is very important. This is what? It's very important that you know this. The word... Here that is used is وَفِي شَأْنِ كُلِّهِ In all of these affairs. The word كُلْ is used. And we know that the word كُلْ is called مِنْ أَبْلَغِ الْعُمُبَاتِ It is one of the most strongest generalization you could ever come across. The word كُلْ جَمِيعَ huh? They are like one of the, they are the powerfulest huh? terms you could use to use generalization. Are you all with me? Mm. Now, the word kul, even that though it shows kul, it shows this powerful generalization. There are times that it could happen that this generalization, some things might exit it. Are you with me? Now, to exit something out of this powerful generalization, are you all with me? Pay attention. This generalization, try to take something out of it. Because it's what, as I said, it's very powerful. The generalization here is very, very powerful. And it, there is nothing in the Arabic language that can show the power and the greatness it could show. Like the word kul jamia are powerful. Okay? Try to say that this kul is not general and this 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 are not under it. You would have to give us evidence. Pay attention. You would have to find another evidence to exit it out. Such as now, example, we said that all the Prophet's affairs, huh? he used to use his right. Are you with me? For instance, everything that the Prophet did, he used to use his right for it. Somebody came up and said, oh, by the way, when he, when he went out of the well, masjid, when he went out of the masjid, he would use his what? He's left. I would say, where's your evidence? As soon as you apply, supply, give me an evidence, you're right. That exits it. What else you got? You say, oh, when he also enters the toilet, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to use his left. Oh, where's your evidence? That he give me the hadith. And I then say to you, okay, you're right. Take that out as well. You say something, something again. You say, for example, when he, uh, uh, when he, uh, for example, he entered his house, you'd go in the left. 
I'll take you. What's your evidence for that? You say I can't. So I can't give you an evidence. Pay attention, okay? I then say to you, sorry, that that, that can't happen. He would go into his talk, your house with a rifle, and then you would say, where's your evidence? I would say the generalization still stands. You haven't taken that out with an evidence. Does that make sense? The people who say, pay attention, pay attention. I get it. Something. The people who say that the kullu bid'ati on balala doesn't show generalization. That's what they want to do. They want to say that the mawlid in Nabawi is, is a... Is, they want to say it's a good innovation. Uh, or the more like they want to say that the, the kullu here doesn't show generalization. And you ask them, so they say to you like the word, the word for example, in this hadith is an indication. But this hadith, what has been ex- exited from the kullu is with other evidences. Your mawli that you exited from the word kullu bid'ati on balala, it needs evidence. Where is this evidence? Since, such, such, since you can't give us that evidence, we will still stick with the kul here, which still shows its generalization. You can't weaken its meaning. Does that make sense? Is that crystal clear? That's something people need to really understand and not be confused or in any way or form or shape think that, you know what, wow, this person's got a point. No. The understanding has to be clear and uh, well understood. The fiqh that we take from the hadith. Uh, but before I go into it, before I go into it, is the general meaning of the hadith I have to mention. The Prophet ﷺ, he used to start with his right. In everything he liked and loved and, 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 and he used to be fascinated with starting with his right. ﷺ. He loved it. Aisha is the one who informed us of this. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was one of the most knowledgeable women or the most knowledgeable woman of this ummah in general. And one of the most knowledgeable companions, radiallahu ta'ala anha. She knew his affairs, Alayhi his guidance, the way he was. She knew his situation publicly and privately. She knew it. Because she's his wife. And she lived with him in his house, Alayhi Salaam. So she was the only one who could actually say that when he wore his shoes, this is how we used to do it. Huh? And also, in his combing his hair, and also in his purification, and also in all of his... Aisha could say this because she lived with, his, with the Prophet Are you with me? She lived with him. So she conveyed to us that private things of his life. Aisha radiallahu anha conveyed it to us. She conveyed it. What's the fiqh that's in the hadith? The fiqh that's in the hadith, the first thing is that to give presidency of a son, to put first your right in all of the matters which are tayyib, good matters. How do you determine something that's good? We take it from three places. Three th- things allow us to know that something's good. Shar'an in the legislation of the sharia. So we learn something is good. First of all, the Sharia tells us morality, as they put it, huh, is from the legislation. Do you all with me? Mm-hmm. We get this from the religion. Our religion is the thing that tells us what is good and what's bad. If people were left to determine what's good and bad without any legislation from God, honestly speaking, things people will start to what? People will start to uh, see the most filthiest things and justify it and say this is more morally good. <laughs> This is what? Uh, morally good. The second thing that does determine what is good or bad is the aql, logic. After like, but that, that comes after legislation has been put in place. And the third which is the ban medically. Something is medically good. Uh, it's also a way to know that it's good and it does determine it. Um, number two is جَعَلُوا الْأَشْرِمَالِ لِلْأَشْيَاءِ الْمُسْتَقْضَى to use your left side on things that are that are looked that are not good things that are seen filthy such as for example that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi prohibited what did he prohibit? al istinja to purify yourself from your and uh, call of nature with your right the Prophet prohibited touching your private part the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi also prohibited it with your right Masjid Zakari bin Yameen the Prophet prohibited it. al istinja bil yameen the Prophet also prohibited it. So your private part, you touch it with your left. Your call of nature, you find. Islam is... Imam al-Nawawi 
put that ضابط in place. He said, قاعدة الشرع مستمرة. The continuous, the continuous legislational principle, the continuous legislational principle is استحباب البداءة باليمين. That is recommended to start with your right في كل ما كان everything which is من باب التكريم والتزيّن. Everything that is beautiful. That is loved. That is good. Huh? وَمَا كَانَ بِضُدِّهَا Anything that is opposite to it is to حب التياسري. Using your left is recommended. Anything that is not good or beautiful, using your left is not. Also, Ibn Mulaqid, he also said the shame in his I'lam before the عُبْدَةِ الْحَكَابِ Something like that. So, for example, he gave, he, he gave examples of things that are good, such as لُبْسُ الثوب Wearing a garment. Start with your right. والسراويل trousers. والخف putting leather socks on. ودخول المسجد entering the masjid. والسواك using سواك use your right. والانتعال put your shoes on. والتقليم الأضافة cutting your nails. هيا والاكتحال using eyeliner on your eyes. Men or women it's sunnah for the men to do it as well. وقص الشارب هيا shorten your sharp. Start with the right side. You see هيا also combing your hair, cutting your your armpits, something good you're doing. Halk al ras, getting rid of your hair. Was salami fi salah, giving salam in the salah. You start with your right. You see, washing when you do the washing, when you do the washing, start with your right side. Wal khuruj min al khala'i, wal akl, leaving from a uh, the toilet, call of nature, and also. Um, um, eating, also drinking, or musafaha, shaking a person's hand. Start with the right side. Uh, starting with the the right side, and the people on the right using your right as well. Was tilamul hajar al aswad. Give his salam to the hajar al aswad. Use your right side. Other than that, two is the second thing which is mustaqdara. Second thing. I mean, second part of what is uh, opposite to bad. Uh, he gave Ibn Mulaqi. So the first type he gave was the good things of using your right. Now he's talking about second things for using for your, your, your left. He said entering the toilet, for example. Well, abakin in mustaqdara. So entering places which are filthy. So, you know, just filthy. Entering it. Well, khuruj min al-masjid. Exiting from the masjid. Also your house. Get it out of your house. Well, istinja. Call of nature. Taking your clothes off. Yeah, you see? Well, uh, Taking your leather socks off or your shoes. Start with the left. All of this is what? All of this is um, is how the Sharia is in terms of knowing what you should use your right with or left. And this, brothers, what is good and what is bad, what is not mentioned by the Sharia, ah, after that, it goes back to the urf and the custom of the people. If the Sharia ah hasn't mentioned anything for this thing, it does go back to the custom of the people. Are you with me? That is then determined what is good or what is bad, or what place is good or what place is bad. It is determined by the custom of the people. If the people look down at that place, then it, looks, it becomes looked down at. And it's Remember the custom of who we look at is not the custom of the disbelievers. Even if it's not mentioned in our religion, the custom that we look at is the custom of the Muslimin. The urf of the Muslimin, not the urf of the kuffar. Pay attention. That's the second point. The third point that we're going to move on to is, which is the fiqh of the hadith, uh, the religion of the Sharia, the Sharia has come with what? Islam, this religion has come to perfect the affairs of the people. وَتَهْذِيبُ أَخْلَاقِهِمْ And it's to, it came to organize and, and, and work on the people's manners and etiquettes. And also to remove a distance from them. وَوِقَايَةُ مِنَ الضَّرَرِ It is to protect them and distance them from any form of harm in any form of... Uh, uh, to protect them from harm uh, in any way or form or shape it is. Four. تَقْدِيمُ مَيَامُ الْأَعْضَاءِ فِي الْوُضُوعِ عَلَى مَيَاسِرِهَا وَلَا يُعْلَمُ فِي ذَلِكَ خِلَافُ مَيْنَ الْعُلَمَا Starting with your right in your bodies when you are doing it. 
over your left. And this is not a matter which the scholars disagree on. So the person is washing your the bodies that are two. For example, your, your hands, you always start with the right, then you do the left. When you do your leg, you start with the right, then you do the left. Does that make sense? Anything that is? In pairs. In pairs. Five. fil Ali Hoa. So remember when I was mentioning before the food, it should be at with what? With the right. Nowadays, what has spread amongst the people is eating with the left and the right, such as burgers. And that's against the Sharia. It goes against the Prophet's command. Because the Prophet said, Kul uh, eat with your right. So the food you have to take with one hand. Now you might say it's too big. Well, they cut it into half and then eat it. Cut it into half and then eat it. Another thing which people tend to do is, and find excuses for themselves, is um, coaches and people who eat with their hands. Coaches and people who eat with their hands tend to when they eat, 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 and they want to drink. They want to? They want to? They want to drink. They say, oh, I can't grab the glass with my right hand because it's going to be dirty. Huh? It's going to be dirty. So he drinks with his left and he eats with his right. Two points. Are you going to wash it? Most likely not. Second thing is that, inshallah, so there's a lot of water, supply it, that can wash it. The second thing is that, why would you even be eating and drinking at the same time? Not that you can't, you can if you want to, but it's following the eye is much better. Unless you are a person who cannot digest the food correctly. Like you just cannot eat the food unless you... So some of you may wonder, where is that from? Allah said the ayah, kulu, and then Allah mentioned, washarabu. So you still might say, well, that doesn't show that it's obligatory. The answer is, the same way when the companions came to the Prophet and they said, Ya Rasulullah, shall we start with Safa or Marwa? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ibda start bima bada Allah, that which Allah started with. So Allah started with Safa, and then Allah said Marwa. They will say, start with that which Allah started with, and then, now. So not that we say it's obligatory to do that, but finish and get rid of the eating first, and then you can, inshallah, if you feel like that's what you want to do, uh, if that's what you're worried about. Other people, they find it hard when they leave the masjid, they have to leave with their, the left, and they have to put the shoe, which is the right one. So some people have it hard, they don't know what to do. They sh their shoes are outside, they have to leave with the left out, but then they have to put their right shoe into the shoe. Well, it's not tricky. You put your, shoe, your leg on the shoe. Put your leg, your left leg that came out on top of the shoe. And then put your right leg in. And then after that, put your left leg in. So you've actually left correctly. And you put the shoes in uh, correctly. Um, number five, which is Start the fifth one, which is what I mentioned, is to start your right with your shoe. The fifth point is Attayamun to start with your right leg with the shoe. Basically means that you put your right leg first into the right shoe first. Whereas the taking off is opposite. The taking off, what do you take it off with? You take the left off first and then you put you take the right off first. But when you're putting it on, huh? when you're putting on, when you're taking it off, you take the left off first. Why is the case? Because the inti'al to cover your leg is better and put something on is better than your naked bare leg. Six. There is no repeated A person who does use his left side and does it with his left first before his right, he doesn't have to bring back the wudu. And even that though he has opposed the sunnah. And Imam al Nawawi brings the ijma' on this issue. He said, Ajma' al ulama, with the scholars are unanimously in agreement, which is what, and the taqdeem al yumna, that the right is given precedence fil wudu'i, in the wudu', and that it's a sunnah. Wa man khalafahuma, anyone who opposes that, that sunnah of using your right first, fatahu fadlu. The virtue and the reward is what he misses out. But his wudu is complete. There's a consensus on this issue. He's still got his wudu. Number eight and uh, number seven. 
Kamalu Sunnah Rasulullah. The complete, the completeness of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is tradition. By doing what? Bi muraatim nadafati. By observing the purification in even combing your hair. In even in what? Combing your hair. The completeness of this religion. That it has left it hasn't left anything. It's telling us how to wear things and how to take them off. Complete religion. So Allah has not left us in darkness, nor his messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam.